I want to welcome you back to the channel. We'll check it out today. We are going to be reviewing Electric Bike Company's Model R. Now this sexy beast, I was able to design myself using their website and I did an entire video on the process that it took for me to build this exact bike. So if you haven't seen that, well, I'm going to put it right there for you to check out. But during this review, we're going to go through all the specs. We're going to get it out. We're going to give it a road test and we're going to see everything that this bike can do. So let's get into it. This is the Model R, and it is a beach cruiser, as you can see, or at least this is how I designed it on their website. Now, it does come as a Class 2 e-bike, which means it'll do 20 miles an hour via the pedal assist or the left-hand thumb throttle right here. Now, this bike, I went ahead and I added a torque sensor to this version of the bike. The Model R starts off at $24.99, but you can customize it and just continue on with the options. This version right here happens to be a little bit over $5,000. The Model R only comes in one size, and the recommended rider height for that is 4.6 to 6.8. Now, it does come in a multitude of colors and customizations. As you can see here, I went with the ultra bright white because I love a black and white bike. I also added the tan accents to just give it that little bit of a look of class. With this version of the Model R, well, Electric Bike Company says it'll do 150 miles on a single battery charge. Now, please note, there is a battery here, and then there are also two batteries mounted in the front basket. The way I have this bike configured, it weighs 72 pounds, and that's because it has this front rack up here, with the extra batteries. Now this bike can handle a maximum payload capacity of 420 pounds, giving a rider weight of 350 pounds, and the additional weight is put on these two racks. I believe that one of the more impressive things about the electric bike company is that it has tons of customization. You can customize everything on this bike, but it's also built and assembled here in the US of A. If you choose to get the front and back rack with this bike, now you can get the front rack without putting a battery in it, but with the battery in it, this front rack will hold 45 pounds and this back rack area will hold 40 pounds. The Model R uses a 500 watt rear hub motor and it has a peak power of 750 watts. It also has 60 Newton meters of torque. It uses a Shimano seven speed transmission with an Altus derailleur and a very sexy Shimano seven speed thumb shifter. Stopping power is provided by the Tektro Dorado four piston brake system with 180 millimeter rotors on the front and the rear. The front suspension on the Model R is adjustable. It does have a hydraulic fork system, which is better than just a normal spring system, and it has 80 millimeters of play. The front fork can be adjusted to match your riding comfort level. I wanna spend a second and talk about these tires because these are custom made for Electric Bike Company. They are 26 by three inch tires. They have a street tread on them, but they have this extra technology for puncture resistance where they've added extra rubber inside making the tire itself thicker to help prevent flats. Let's talk about the batteries on this bike. Well, we have the first one, which is here in the down tube. It's a 48 volt, 14 amp with 672 watt hours in it. It is made from 21700 LG cells, so it's UL certified and you can charge it right here or you can remove it from the bike. Now the second battery is up here in the basket and it's two batteries that are connected together. It's also 48 volt, 14 amp, but it has 864 watt hours inside this basket, giving you a total of 1,536 total watt hours that is on this bike. That's how they claim this bike will do 150 miles. Now you guys know me, we will be testing this out. I really hope that it doesn't do 150 miles, but you know what? The seat looks pretty comfy. I think I might be okay. Not sure if I can do it all in one day, but we'll see. Now to charge the basket battery, well, there is a charging port right here. When it comes to the battery charger that comes with this bike, well, it's a 3.5 amp charger, so it's a super fast charger. It has a fan built into it, so it's gonna stay nice and cool. And it looks like to charge each one of these batteries up will take about four to five hours. So remember, that'll be twice, four to five for this one, four to five for that one. 
Let's take a look at these pedals. Since this is a beach cruiser, well, this bike is designed to where you can ride it with wearing flip-flops or even barefoot. Let's talk about this rear rack system because it can hold 40 pounds and it has a couple of different ways that you connect things to it. You have this spring load system here where you can attach some things to the rails here, but it has a built-in mix system. And if you're not sure what that is, let me show you with these bags. I purchased these bags to go along with it, but right here, you have this mix system. It's a hard mount. It's a quick, easy on and off. I'm gonna show you how it works. You just go ahead and you just click that in and boom, it's in there. It's totally secure. And it takes a tool like this, which folds up. You open it up, you put it in the slot right here, push it in and takes the bags right off. This bike does come with some standard features like this quick release seat post, this adjustable stem, which I think is always great when they add that to bikes, and also this quick release front wheel. When it comes to the things that I added and the upgrades that I did, I added the fenders, both of these fenders. I added the back rack here, did the upgraded seat and suspension seat post, upgraded the grips to leather, upgraded the whole light system and cockpit area, and added an anti-theft alarm. This is the anti-theft alarm system that I got for the bike. Take a look at this. Comes with, oh, yep, comes with all that, but look at these. <laughs> look at these remotes. Yeah, it also comes with a electric bike company key tag, two remotes, and then the keys to the batteries well, are right here. Cockpit operations. Now on the left-hand side here, you have this very nice leather electric bike company grip. It says it right there on the grip itself. You have your front brake lever. This is your throttle right here. As you can see with the version that I have, it has turn signals and this is how you operate those. But right here is your control panel. So you're gonna put that button, you're gonna hold it down and then boom, it brings it up. Let's go over the display. As you can see here, we have the battery power right here, which is in color and it also shows the volt temperature speed, what pedal assist level we're in, the amount of power, time, distance. I'm sure if we hit a button here, we can get other information. Odometer, average speed, max speed, and back to center. As you can see, it shows that pedal assist level is off, which means the throttle works, but no pedal assist. Now to get that to work, well, all you're gonna do is hold down your minus button here, and then you will see the indicator, and it shows on the display now that your pedal assist will now work with the bike. As I mentioned, this bike has turn signals, so if I hit one of the turn signals, it shows it right here on the indicator. To turn the turn signals off, or you're just gonna move the button to the middle. On the right-hand side here, you have a grip, but then you also have a horn. <laughs> That's loud. Here is your thumb shifters right here. This drops the gears, this brings it up. Then you also have your headlights. So to turn your headlights on, you're just gonna hold on the up button. And when those come on, well, you can control, you have normal lighting, and then you have bright lights. So it just turns on your second set of lighting. You will also see it indicated on your screen. And with this version of the Model R, you have the two turn signals and brake lights here, plus a brake light right here. Now that we've gone through all of the specs, it's time to take this beach cruiser out on the road and see how it does. Alrighty guys, we are on the road and we are checking it out to see how the speedometer is. I figured we'd start off with that for a change so that we know, but it looks like it's matching up. So that's off to a good start. At least we know that the, uh, the trip mileage and the speeds that we're getting are gonna be correct. Now for this trip, even though this thing has like two sets of headlights on the front, I like the blinking types. So I went ahead and put the Magic Shine uh, light right there. Put a side mirror on over here. Couldn't use the bar in mirror because these uh, handlebars kick back too much or they sweep back too much. So I got this one right here and I have my foldy lock with me. Now I have gone ahead and unlocked this bike to a class three because you know me, if the bike is able to be unlocked, I'm going to unlock it for the testing. Let's go ahead and do the throttle test and see how fast the throttle is going to go. I'm going to put it in pedal assist one just to see if it is controlled by whatever pedal assist level we are in. And no. All right, so this thing should tap out at 20 miles an hour. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now you know that it doesn't matter what pedal assist level that you're gonna be in, your throttle is going to uh, stop at 20 miles an hour in any pedal assist level. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the pedal assist. Now this is a torque sensor, so I don't expect uh, um, 
much jumps between each pedal assist level. That's mostly for, you know, like hitting hills and stuff. So let's go and see how fast we can go with pedal assist number one. Which in pedal assist level one, I mean, this is a comfortable ride right here. So let's go ahead and kick it into pedal assist level two, see if I notice any difference. Nah, I didn't figure I would. Pedal assist three. Well, you know, I feel it feels a little bit easier just moving along. Let's see what pedal assist four does. Okay, now I feel the making it super easy. Let's go ahead and kick up into gear five. Ooh, six. This bike wants to go. Gear seven. Oh, see, that feels nice. Yeah, gear seven, pedal assist number four, cruising at 23, 24 miles an hour. That feels good. Let's see what pedal assist five does. Oh, it just made me want to go faster. Yo, let's go. So in pedal assist number five, gear seven, you can comfortably cruise at 27, 28 miles an hour. But we're going to slow it down. We got a bunch of people coming up. Oh, these four piston brakes makes it feel really good whenever you stop. This motor's quiet too. These tires are quiet. This bike is stealthy. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do the zero to 20 time test. We're using throttle only. It's in pedal assist one, but we know it doesn't matter. Ready? Three, two, one, let's go. It has a little bit more aggressive of a takeoff, but I like it. Oh, that was like, what, 14 seconds. Nice. Let's go ahead and do the pedal assist zero to 20 time test. I have in pedal assist five, gear four. Let's go. Oh, oh there we go. That thing kicked off pretty good. Boom, eight seconds. All right, we are doing the, the speed time top test. I have in pedal assist five. We're gonna use throttle. We're gonna use pedal assist. We're gonna use gearing. Let's go. Uh, let's see how fast we can hit 28 miles an hour. You have to let go of the throttle by the time you hit 20 miles an hour. Let's kick it up in some gears. Nice. We hit 8 28 in like 16 seconds. Let's talk size and fit. Now, first of all, this bike is 76.4 inches long. So it's, you know, I'm only 69. So if I did stand it up on its back, which I'm not going to do with this because I don't know, this bike feels just like totally custom, totally nice. It's a cruiser bike. I don't want to stand it up. If I need to get it in the garage and it's too close, I'll just move one of the cars out of the way. As you can see, I did put these saddlebags here on the back and these are really nice. I have all my camera equipment in here to include like tools and four bottles of water. Now I am using one of these suspension seat posts, so I don't think it's going to give me the total uh, height that you can go, but this is super low right here for your shorter rider, right? And with that being right there, let's not forget that this is adjustable and you can move it up or down and then these handlebars move up like that. Right now I have it in a totally comfortable position where I'm just sitting there just riding it like uh, totally straight up and down. It's not putting any pressure on my back at all. Let's go ahead and put this at its highest setting and that's for this seat post. I'm sure if you have a different seat post or maybe just like a stock one, it goes up higher. But with this one, that's where it is right there. One thing I want to mention though, I did notice because right here are my turn signals. So anytime that you have a bag or something like that on the back, unless it's just a, a trunk bag, then it's going to block the turn signals on this bike. Now the brake light is still back here, so you'll still see it. But besides that, I mean, these are going to cover that. It's totally fine. A lot of bikes don't have uh, turn signals anyways. It is a nice feature to have though. I'll probably still use it while riding because somebody from the side might actually see it. So let's get on the road and keep testing. We are in the bright sunlight and I can see this display perfectly clear, which is a good feature. And I tell you what, man, this seat. Oh, I'm really hoping that by the end of this ride, this seat feels just as comfortable as it does right now. All right, let's go ahead and do our little off-road park. Anybody need a uh, front bumper? There's one right there. All right, now we're using throttle only. You know, I can tell that the front end does feel a little bit heavy because of this basket and the battery in there with that extra weight on the front. But I don't hear any other noise. Let's come on off the, off the curb here, see how it feels. Oh, that was like easy breezy. 
Oh, that was nice. Now this bike weighs 56 pounds without this front battery area right here, which would definitely affect how it would handle on off-road stuff. But also the, with these handlebars that we on here with the, with the series swooping back action, I mean, you wouldn't want to take it on too much off-road stuff. This thing is a city beach cruiser for sure. We are here for the hill climb and we have it in pedal assist number five. This does have a 500 watt motor, so I do expect it to make it up 60 Newton meters of torque. We're gonna to do throttle only. Let's see how it goes. All right, well, uh-oh. Uh-oh, are we not gonna make it? Oh no. Oh, you know, it must be the weight or something because we, this does not have the ump to make it, which I'm kind of shocked to be honest. Let's, uh, let's try that again. All right, let's try it again. See if there's any difference. We are in pedal assist number five, using throttle only. Let's see if it's going to, it's this part of the hill that always gets the bikes. And yeah, it's not gonna do it. But if I just easily, I'm in pedal assist number five, and if I just crank it, a little bit, we can make it up the hill. Huh. All right, so I expected uh, a little bit more from that. All right, now we're gonna roll into it and see how that does. All right, we're rolling, we're rolling. Let's try it this time. And this is the part of the hill where it normally clunks out. Ah. Well, we are just barely moving. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We're going to go ahead and this time we're just going to pedal up. I'm sure it's going to be easy that way. Yeah. So if you see a hill, well, you're just going to want to be cranking when you get to it. There's no need to slow down. Kick it down a couple gears. That'd be a little bit easier. Yeah, there we go. All right, so at least we know that if we end up doing this and you see like a hill, we'll just keep pedaling if you want to make it up. But it just doesn't have the power throttle only to make it up a hill with this incline. And what is that incline? Well, that is a great question because I don't know. <laughs> I haven't figured out a way to figure it out yet. All right, guys, we have made it out here to Lakeshore Drag. It is loud because it is the air show here in Chicago this weekend. So there is literally just planes out here just doing all kinds of stuff. This is our first stop. Strava says we're at 9.95. The display says we're at 10.1. And we have 47.6 voltages left, which is basically the two bars on the bike. Now we're gonna be heading this way and that way. So we're just gonna be checking it out. Hopefully I can get some air show shots and uh, yeah, let's keep moving. One thing I wanna point out is I do have this bike on pedal assist number five. That's how I've been uh, doing this whole trip. Only because uh, if I have to go a long way, uh, I'm trying to protect my left knee. And so I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. what I pulled over here for a second because I never really talked about the the anti-theft system on this and because of this remote it has a lock and unlock and let me show you what that sounds like that's loud now here's the thing if it's locked up or even if it's not locked up and somebody starts to mess with the bike well it's going to give them a warning and then if you try to take it well it's just going to go off And that's the fun part of it. Now to turn it off, you hit the unlock button and... All right, let's get moving. We have made it to the end of the Lakeshore Trail. And as you can see, we barely have any battery left. 
we're only at 15.5 miles. Uh, <laughs> that's not very far. This bike doesn't sound like it's heavy, but I've been fighting a headwind the whole way. So you take the weight of that, the weight that I put on there, my body weight, and the fact that I've left it in pedal assist five and gear seven this entire time. Well, we're not gonna make it too much farther before this battery ends up dying and then me switching out. All right, so I had full power all the way until this battery died and it's died right now. So we're gonna hit this switch over here. As you can see, we have zero where it bounces between the zero. We're gonna give it a second to hit. And we are back in the game. Here in a second, this is going to update and it's gonna show that we have full battery power again. There it is. As you can see it right there, it's showing that we are full again. So I'm calling it that we only made 17 and a half miles on the battery that is in the, in the tube. With that in mind, I will be lucky to get 40 miles out of this bike, maybe 45 at the most. So this 150 mile distance that they're talking about is obviously somebody with a lot lighter weight. And I would say that they didn't have the bike unlocked and are riding in like pedal assist one or two. You know, so far I can say that the riding experience on this bike is nothing short of excellent. Not only is this the smoothest bike that I have ever ridden or reviewed, but it is also the most comfortable. But this seat in the back and that suspension seat post is definitely doing its job. I mean, that thing is awesome. We are gonna do the brake test coming up. Let's go ahead and get it going. Let's crank, let's crank, let's crank. We are at 25 miles an hour. Woo. 34 feet at 25 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a little bit faster. Brake test number two. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go, 28 miles an hour, baby. Oh. Let's see where we're at. Right at 38. Whew. She takes a little bit to get going. She also takes a little bit to stop, but it was a very smooth braking experience. So I have no complaints. All right, guys, we are gonna turn around. There is Chicago straight ahead. It is 31.9 miles. Strava showing we're at 31.26 miles. So this is very, very close. We are gonna to start to head back now because uh, I'm hoping that I can get another 20, 15 to 20 miles before I'm back home. So uh, let's see if I make it. I forgot to mention that we have two bars left. So I think we're just gonna cruise in pedal assist level three to make sure I can make it home. I do like the fact that you could just look down here and see that it is 73 degrees. It feels excellent today. Couldn't have been a better Friday. And this also has the updated lighting system, which means that this right here is a sensor. So then when it gets dark, the headlights will come on automatically or I can turn them on myself. You know, on a day like this, riding at pedal assist number three at about 17, 18 miles an hour, yeah, you could definitely extend the amount of range that you're gonna get out of this bike for sure. All right, we're down to one bar. We're at uh, 41.2 miles. You know the thing about this display when it comes to the battery readings is that unfortunately it doesn't give me a battery percentage. Instead, it's telling me how many volts it's putting out. But unless I have a chart, I'm not gonna be able to know just by looking. So that's the, that's the part that I don't really like about this bike is the fact that you just don't know at what point is it gonna run out without using a chart to kind of see where you're at. Here we are on the 606 trail. Now this trail is 3.3 miles in length and well, it says 2.7, but it's about 3.3 to the house. We're gonna go ahead and kick it into pedal assist five, which is what I was riding most of this uh, trail in anyways. And let's see uh, how far we make until the battery runs out. I don't know if you can see this, but now it doesn't show that we have any battery level it's not flashing but it does show zero battery but we're still at 43 volts and we just lost everything 
we just lost it. So let me pull over here. I mean, that was it. I'm gonna have to lower these gears for when I take off. Yeah, that was abrupt. So it seems that with this bike, that it just goes full bore until it just runs out of battery. So it's not like with some where they cut down the power and you don't go as fast. This one just totally shuts off. Strava shows that we made it 44.94 miles until the battery died. Huh, look, at, look at everywhere we went though. Woo, okay. Luckily, I'm less than a mile from home. So let me catch you here in a minute with my final thoughts. I have made it back. Now, Strava said that this bike went 44.94 miles before it went dead and the display, well, it shows me nothing because it just cut right off and that's all it did. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and charge this up. I am kind of surprised that I figured I would get more mileage out of this bike considering it says it would do 150 miles, but that would also be with the bike locked at 20 miles an hour, probably in pedal assist four, so you'd probably be going slower than what I was going. And if you remember, I had this bike unlocked doing 25 to 28 miles per hour as long as I could for as far as I could until I decided to turn around and head back and then put it down into pedal assist number three to try to save some distance and battery so I could make it home. Now I want to tell you besides that, this bike rides like it is on a cloud. Oh my gosh, I could have ridden this thing all day long. So even if it could have done more than the 45 miles that it did, I would have been totally happy because even doing that distance and getting off of this bike, this seat is amazing, right? <laughs> when you add the seat and the suspension seat post, I mean, I am totally fine. I didn't even feel it by the time that I got done with this ride. I do kind of find it annoying that every time you turn on the bike, uh, the, the electric bike company like terms and services comes up and you have to accept it every time. And I've seen it where it says, do not show this again, but there's, I don't know how to get to it. And I haven't seen that anywhere in the instructions. So that's kind of annoying. I mean, I'm kind of really nitpicking on this bike right now because everything else about this was absolutely enjoyable. I mean, this thing rides like it's on a cloud. It is really super, super nice. Now it is a big bike and it is kind of heavy in the front with that extra battery. So if you end up doing the extra battery, make sure that you, you know, keep that in mind. But besides that, I mean, it's, it wasn't even a steering issue or anything. You just kind of know that the front end is heavier because of that extra battery. Now, if you are interested in any of Electric Bike Company's bikes or you just want to check them out, well, go ahead, click that link below. That'll take you right there. It seems like they're constantly running different kinds of specials and sales. So you might be able to save some pretty good money on one of these bikes. Well, this does it on my review of the Electric Bike Company's Model R. I want to thank you for watching. And until I see you again, enjoy the ride.